Welcome back, Cigar Talk. I'm your host, Rob Jones. We got Bryant Falconer, extraordinaire co-host in the studio. How you doing, brother? Hey, man, I'm doing good. Doing good. <laughs> what, what What's going on with that get up? You had COVID. I did. You know what? I did have COVID, but I have been medically cleared. I'm good to go. You, you're more than welcome to take that ridiculous contraption. You sure? I'm positive. <laughs> right. So anyway, you know what? I, I want to, first of all, everybody, I think, is pretty aware that I had COVID last week. So we released a pre-show that might have been a little uh, rough around the edges, so to speak. And so I just want to apologize. I didn't screen it before I posted it. So anyway, I got I got some good feedback. And I always you appre- did. I didn't say it was positive. <laughs> I just said good okay. as an in informational. Mm. But anyway, uh, I wanted to say thank you to all the guys that reached out, asked me how I was doing, said they were praying for me. And, you know, that meant a lot that people actually, you know, wish me well. You know, I'm not used to that around here. I don't know if uh, you notice. After I found out you were all right, I cursed you out. Because you thought maybe I got it to you? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell like you what. You, you know, I did oh. <gasps> I did the whole trace back thing uh-huh. because I was baffled. Because, gotcha. you know, and the great thing is I don't think I spread it to anyone. Mm-hmm. I think I got it, and it stopped with me. My wife didn't get it. Luke didn't get it. You and Larry didn't get it. Yeah. And Jay didn't get yeah. it. So I was very thankful that I was not responsible for passing it on. It hit you, and it thought, if I got to deal with this asshole, I don't <laughs> right. want to mess with his friends. <laughs> like, man, this this dude's rough. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, it was, uh, it, it was part of it was, you know, the anticipation of how bad it's going to be yeah. once you figure out that's what you got. Because I didn't realize that I had COVID until I was already like three days in. Tell the truth. You know, and the funny thing is, it's like, do you know what the first steps of the- No, I don't. No, I don't. Right. But we should. Yes. So, so I had what I thought was a major allergy oh, okay. attack. Okay. Nose running, sneezing. And this is a time of year that I do get allergies. Okay. So I, just I started taking my allergy yeah. medicine, and I was just like, man. And it lasted for like 36 hours. And It's not allergies. <laughs> well, but then it went away. Okay. So then I was like, okay. It's the calm before the storm. Right. Well, then that same night, my lower back was hurting really bad. And I mm. was like, man, I told my wife, I was like, I think I pulled a muscle in my back. Mm. And she was like, doing, how? She, you're doing what? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Wake up? <laughs> <laughs> you got out of bed. That's it. <laughs> so, you know, I couldn't figure that out. But then, then the next morning when I woke up. My lower, middle, and upper back all hurt. Mm. And that was when I kind of was like, I might be sick, <laughs> but I didn't feel sick. You know what Got I mean? It was just, just my prepared. back. Yeah. And so uh, I took some ibuprofen and stuff like that for my back, and I did that for like 36 hours. And then the fatigue hit, dun, 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 dun. and I lost my sense of smell, which I don't know at what point I lost my sense of smell. <laughs> it might have been day one. Yeah. But what was interesting was I just happened to be shampooing my hair, and I used that tea tree, which is very fragrant. Hold up. Hold up. Yeah. I don't mean to cause anything. No, no, no. But you said you were in day three. When you took a shower. No, no. <laughs> Isn't that what he like Lucas said? Yeah. When I washed my hair. But you said you didn't oh. <laughs> I don't I don't wash my hair every day. Oh. I wash it usually like every third or fourth day. Because okay. you know, I don't want to damage I don't have a whole lot. <laughs> You don't want to take and, you know, scrub it out. So you look down at the, at the, at the drain like, ooh, yeah. that's a toupee. Right. <laughs> so, you know, it's like if you don't look real close, I look like I have a full head of hair. You say look real close. But if you look closely. You're like, whoa. <laughs> it's like the astral turf has been worn. So, anyway, you got to be gentle with I it. Got you. But anyway, I use tea tree, and it, it's very... Uh, I said fragrant. Fragrant. I don't. Have you ever smelled it? It's, nope. it's real minty. Okay. And so anyway, so it, huh? it's very strong. Oh, so and, it's a scent that you would recognize. 
my wife can and she sit in the living room knows when I'm washing my hair, she can smell it. For real. And then she smiles. Hey, hey. And I was He's in there. real clean now. <laughs> and I was like, I can't smell my shampoo. That is so weird. I thought, is something wrong with, with my shampoo? shampoo? Yeah. So then I smelled my wife's shampoo, which is, you know, green apple something. I don't know. He couldn't smell that either. I was like, oh. That's so when it hit. I got out. I smelled dun, dun, my dun, deodorant. Dun. Nothing. I was like. He, he walking around the yep. house sniffing everything. <laughs> yeah, I was, man. I can't, I can't, I can't smell. <laughs> so let me tell you the benefit of not being able to smell. There is a benefit to that? Well, there's probably more than one, but my <laughs> okay. my benefit is I have been retro hailing like 10, 15 times per cigar. <laughs> to used to, it was only like once or twice. Only you would find a benefit on that level. <laughs> I can retro hail every puff. <laughs> exactly. I was like, dude, this is awesome. <laughs> I am retro hailing and I'm not getting the burn the burn none of it it's it's just enjoyable you're not tasting anything not, just, not getting any just, tasting notes watch i look it's like a like, dragon look at this yeah i'm pete <laughs> <laughs> just as long as you're not puff <laughs> no 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 not puff so oh, that is that is weird for you to get that on that i'm sick as hell this is the one that is taking people away but guess what i can retro hell right i can retro hell very well watch. often often <laughs> often so well, i'm just glad you're all right bro dude, i was praying for you, you know it really was really yesterday i felt really good 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 and today i was like baby i'm back that's all i am like. back i noticed that this morning right <laughs> i mean first of all i beat larry yeah getting to the league yeah <laughs> he walks in and i because i've been at the counter talking to uh, scott for several minutes uh -huh. and i see larry walk in sprinted off in fact scott was in the middle of telling me a story and i was like sorry gotta go bro bye <laughs> i have to get the seat i have to get the chair <laughs> that i want to sit in because me and Larry both like sitting in the same you, seat. You, Larry, and one other. Scott. <laughs> you right. left today, and guess who got in that seat? <laughs> you tell him there was some COVID residue? It was like, I don't know. <laughs> Larry looked at him like Clorox. <laughs> <laughs> so, and just so you know, we did clean the studio. We disinfected with Lysol. You see the can there? I walked in with okay. the mask on. Right. Luke came in behind me and said, he laughed and he said, I sprayed everything. <laughs> he sprayed everything I was down. Like, okay, I'll take it off. Cause you know. We, and then you came. We want to, we don't want to not have spread that around. Mm -mm. No, thank you. Mm -mm. So, hey, enough about COVID. I just wanted to say thank you to all the people who reached out to me. This is how much of an epiphany he had from COVID. Look at what we're smoking. Yeah. So, yeah, let's talk about what we're smoking. So, and so I, mine, I mine. bought, he bought Bryant and myself. Uh oh. Because this is the uh, Monte Cristo Espada. Say that word, first word again. Monte Cristo. He said he bought Monte Cristo. I did. I did. You know what? Because I, I know this is one of your favorites. Yes. Things. This was the beginning for me, man. Was it really? You started Not an out. Espada, but oh, uh, oh, the Monte Cristo. Monte Cristo. And, you know, I would say that the Espada is, is, mm. is really one of their top of the line signature series cigars. For I a mean, person like you. Yeah. You would appreciate that. Even though you wouldn't put it on a high level, you would smoke the Espada. So my question, I don't even know that much about Monte Cristo, mm -hmm. but like, do they make, do they have a higher quality line than the Espada. They have a lot in the line. They're a major, you know. So well, they, right, but they, is there any top tier? Not to me. Is this it? To me, the Espada <laughs> hits it. That and the Platinum Series. This and the Platinum Series. Now, the Platinum Series is more like the classic. Yeah. Right? In the, in the silver tubes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love and it. I'm not a fan of any cigar that comes in a silver tube, a glass <laughs> tube. You know, rolled up in a paper towel. Uh, you, you know, you might have taken a paper towel, but not the tube and the glass tube. I understand. I truly do. You want to keep it as simple as possible. Right. Got you, bro. But anyway, no, I'm going to tell you, and you know, I am not one to go back and disagree with something I said before. Mm -hmm. Usually, if I say something, I you stand, stand by on it. it. Yeah. 
But, you know, I've had a couple of things. And I think you remember one. Yeah. I recently Dang. reevaluated the McAuliffe medallion. Yeah. You know, I have always stood my ground firm that the Corona Extra was the better cigar. Yeah. But after smoking another box of the Toros, I realized it's a different cigar. It is. It's not the same experience. And if you're trying to compare apple to apple, so to speak, you can't because it's not exactly the same cigar. It's different. <laughs> and so being able to smoke the Toro, I, it gave me a complete appreciation for what that cigar is. And I got to say, it's a fantastic cigar. Yeah. So that being said, the Monte Cristos that I've had, okay, I've never liked them. Okay. I've never enjoyed them. And then also, you know, I get tired of the name Monte Cristo because you know what? It's thrown around everywhere. It's it's guys that don't smoke don't cigars. They know too. It's like Cohibas and Monte, and Monte Cristos. Cristos. Yep. And then the third would be Macanudo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Definitely. But so I've you know not been a big fan. You know that. Everybody knows that. Monte Cristo's at the bottom of my food chain. <laughs> but I gotta say, this is spot has been nice. Okay. I, it's, I take that. It's rich tobacco. Mm -hmm. It's got a good, it's got a little sweetness to it. Uh, it's, it's not peppery mm -hmm. at all. It's, at it's all. very smooth. It's got a hint of like maple. Oh, you did taste that. Yeah. Okay. And it's like, you know what it eases you mm -hmm. into. And then, you know, just a really good rich tobacco yeah. flavor. And it shows you what they can do. Yeah. And, you know, I'm usually not one to jump on a cigar that's more, on the sweeter side, mm -hmm. but it's not so sweet. Like it's not going to remind you of a Cuba Cuba or <laughs> what is that? A blondie. Yeah. And so I appreciate the blending on the cigar. Gotcha. I really do. Gotcha. And so I'm going to give hats off to Monte Cristo for the Espada for the Espada. We thank you, sir. And this is the, I believe it's six and a half by yep. 50. It's the Espada Oscuro. It is a great stick. It is. It is very enjoyable. It's a great stick. I won't say it's great, but anyway. <laughs> hey, well, let's. let's he let's, left me out there again. <laughs> talk about our uh, sponsors real quick, and I have to say, I got to give out an apology already, uh, because I haven't had time with having COVID to do our humidor review. Mm -hmm. You know the uh, case elegance. Elegance. I got the humidor, and then I got COVID, yeah. so I never got to do the review. We're going to try to knock that out Monday, and so I just want to say we thankful that you're here, so you can do the review. Hey, bro, thank you. Yeah, but I'm excited to do it. It's on yeah. the Octador, which is an eight sided humidor. Eight now sides. it's not like an Octador, like a stop sign shape. It's it's uh, rectangular, mm -hmm. but the corners are angled. So it gets that snug fit. Mm. So you're not going to want to miss that review. And then we're actually going to give that away. Yes. So we're excited. To bless someone. So Case Elegance is also one of our sponsors. Yes. They're a new sponsor. Yes. They build quality humidors, but mm. they also build. Let them know. Watch cases. Which is if you're my Right. And then also, dude, have you looked on their website yet? I looked at some things. What are you about to? That leather bag. Dude, that leather bag. See, that's you, that's, you, that's in my, my realm because that's the type of well, accessory. You're, you're, a, you're, a, you're a dapper dude. <laughs> my daughter told me that this morning. Yeah, she's you're like, a dapper she's dude. Like, Daddy, you got a swag to you. She said it's kind of old, but you still swaggy. I was like, wow. You know what I said? Thank you. Hey, hey I was just say, <laughs> thank you. you were like, thanks for noticing. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but that's my type because, you know, going to counties, I can put everything in my bag, throw it around my shoulders, and I'm just, my Dude, hands are free. And you know what I liked about that bag? If you look at the details, Ooh. the hardware Whew. is all top of the line. Yes, sir. The stitching. They're not playing. No. They're not playing. This is a bag, and I want to say that bag I, man, what well, I don't even remember how much it was, but it was it was not ridiculous. When I looked at it, I was like, "That's not bad." And For the thing what about you're it is, getting nowhere near I as think bad. That would be a bag that lasts you 
for oh, your yeah. for your entire days. I on pass this. that on. Yeah, yeah, I pass it, that on. It's that level of quality, and I say that because that's the level of quality that they put into their humidors. Yes, sir. And so go to their website, check them out. It is Case Elegance. Yes. And anyway, we're super proud to have those guys yes, on sir. board. Yes, sir. We'll be talking a lot about them over the next couple of months. And uh, we're going to be giving away the Octador. The Octador. So you're we, not going to. He didn't keep it this time. I'm not keeping it. <laughs> hey, now, speaking of our last giveaway, yeah. which was we haven't finished it yet nope. because it's the blue Bugatti, Bugatti. torch. Bugatti. And the thing about it is we are not going to do the winner till next week. Okay. So if you haven't left your best, funniest comment on that video. Still have a chance. Yeah, you still have a chance. And I got to tell you, some people <laughs> left some really good comments. Did you? Well, you, you know what? We'll, we'll, this, you know what? Next week when we uh, announce the winner, next week on the next show, we'll announce the winner. Okay. But we'll also read <clears throat> off not only the winning comment left okay. but some other ones okay because <laughs> some of the some of the ones i don't even know which one's in the running yet right. but i gotta say there were some good ones all right i uh, got you did you read bill white's mm, oh no his was really good <laughs> so but anyway we me luke and you will sit down and go over all the comments at the end of the week so you basically still have five days to leave a comment on that video if you want a chance at winning my personal blue bugatti torch so anyway, one of our other sponsors, as you guys probably already know, is McAuliffe Cigars. I mean, where to start with McAuliffe? Those guys are leading the industry when it comes to innovation. Uh, their cigars are as good as anybody's on the market. I mean, I have several of their cigars that are my very favorites, but... I mean, top to bottom, they knock it out of the park. Yes. And, you know, when you have a cigar line that stands on its own. On its own. You don't <laughs> usually hear any information about the company. No. But with McAuliffe, you have top of the line cigars that do stand on their own. Yes, sir. But you also have a company that is so focused on the consumer, the brick and mortar, their ambassadors, that. You can't not notice what McAuliffe is doing. Mm -mm. I mean, they, to me, they are setting the pace. They pre present the ICE. That's I-C-E, the ideal customer experience. They really do. Yes. They really do. And, I mean, their cigars, uh, foe to $42. Oh, he said it, y'all. So, he said it. <laughs> you know, the thing about it is, I mean, dude. What can, what can you not say? Right. And, you know, the funny thing is. And I've said this before, but whenever you look at, say, the Medallia, mm -hmm. $10 stick. Sumatra. $10, well, not even 10 It's mm -hmm. like an $8 mm -hmm. stick. But both of those are like anywhere between, say, $12 and $18. Mm -hmm. So whether you're buying the cigar at the low end of 4 mm -hmm. versus a Medallia at 10 you're still getting a tremendous value. Yes. Yes. There's not there's nothing you can say about it. You know what I've been fiending for? What's that? A reserva. I knew that. Dude. That was in my mind. Dude, we need you know what we need to have those soon. <laughs> Real soon. Yeah. I haven't had one in a quite Real some time. Soon. And you know what? That is a cigar that is like you know. You're living. <laughs> you know what I mean? You smoke that. You're living. But see, somebody came in the game smoking them, so they don't understand. Right? <laughs> yeah, we're looking at you, Luke. <laughs> now, now, to be fair, we're looking at you. he hasn't had a reserve yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He no, he's had the Riata. That's what he started. I think that was his first cigar was the Riata. You look at me like, yes. <laughs> yes. That's where I started. The game was fixed in the beginning. <laughs> right? It's like, take a dive, son. <laughs> no, I'm not taking a dive. <laughs> I started off the champ. I'm going to stay the champ. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
So anyway, guys, also, if, if you haven't become an ambassador, and I can't believe you haven't if you listen to our show, yes. but I do see people still going through the link that we provide. So go look in the show notes. Click on the link, McAuliffe Ambassador. And those numbers are... Oh, dude. Outrageous now. Last but one I remember testament. was like 5,300. No, remember somebody told us they had 6,000 and something. Wow. We, we was at the Leaf. We had, oh, what was that guy? Oh, that's right. Everybody was pulling out yeah. their numbers. <laughs> that's right. said was six, it, I was said 6,000. Was that Keegan? I think it was Keegan. I it think might it, have been Keegan. Yeah. 6,000. I know. I was, I was blown like, away. 165. <laughs> You're like 165. What a, 165. What a, what a dick. You have too many numbers. <laughs> Dude, I mean, that's pretty, that's uh. something. I mean, that's a, I mean, you automatically, you're kind of like Luke. <laughs> you started out in the first 200. 200. The first 200. First 200. And because, what is it, like the first 30 or something? Well, really, them. well, really I can say I oh, yeah. started out within the first 200. Yeah, you did too. I'm, and I'm then you two, lost it. No, I'm two numbers away from 300, yeah. but I'm still in the first 200. What, what was your first number? 298. 298. And then you lost it. I found it, though. So See. now I'm back to 298 again. <laughs> I love it. That other one is put up now. You're too high of a number. <laughs> Sit back. Because <laughs> it's, it's 299. <laughs> one number up. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, though. Man. So, but no, if you haven't, if you haven't joined the McCalla family, the ambassador team, yes. look in the show notes, click on the link, and it's an easy sign up. Let them know that Cigar Talk sent you. And. They'll send you your coin with your own number on yours. it. It'll be high, but it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be way up there. <laughs> but it's yours. <laughs> but, you know, and you know, the cool thing is, is how some of the people that I've talked to that have numbers in the thousands, mm-hmm. it's funny to see how so many people like associate that number with something in their life. Yeah. That's you know cool, I mean? though. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, I haven't thought of this in forever, but you know what? I didn't miss... 298 days in a row of school <laughs> you know that's that's kind of the examples i get and it's like and the participation award comes to, <laughs> i'm not down in it because i understand you know it's well, you your number connection. yeah it's your right. number it represents it's yours. something about you. my thing is the new coins you know our coins were the first batch right they got elaborate with theirs dude they look nice i'm like I might try to get a four digit, <laughs> but no, 165. 165. You'll take it right it's yours. So, anyway, let's talk about the leaf. 1166 North Second. That's right. The leaf in Abilene, Texas, which is our home shop. If you go by there whenever, there's a good chance either I will be there or Bryant will be there or oh, both of us will be there. <laughs> so, you might catch Larry a lot. <laughs> yeah, Larry might be there. I mean, really, he's like six days a week. <laughs> a staple. And he walks in, Larry. <laughs> no, no, he's opening. <laughs> <laughs> They've given him keys. Keys. <laughs> so, but anyway. The the leaf has been, and I'll tell you what, I had COVID, and you know, mm-hmm. I actually did the quarantine the way you should quarantine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I I messaged Jay and said, hey, man, I just want to give you a heads up. I got COVID. I would appreciate if you would pass it along to everybody who was there last Saturday in case I was contagious. And he did. And he did. That's how I found out. And because I, and you know. I, he he's the leader of the cigar family yeah, down there, yeah. and so he takes care of business. But anyway, he sends me a message back and says, "So I guess you're in quarantine." I was like, "Yeah, I haven't been able to leave the house for like three days, mm-hmm. and I still got another ten yeah. or eleven. And he was like, "You need some sticks," and I was like, "Oh, brother, I do." <laughs> and he was like, "What do you want?" And I was like, "You know what? Just pick me out whatever you think yeah, I want to smoke." Yeah. And I'll pay for it. And he threw in some extra sticks yeah. just because, you know, he takes he's care a kind of guy. Yeah, he is. But he anyway, truly is. let me tell you this. The cigars that he put in my care package, he so to speak, play. He don't play. I was blown away. Yeah, he don't play. I was, dude, let me tell you something. I was like, dude, that should be a sampler. <laughs> that should be a sampler. But, you know, the cool thing is, too, he knows me, mm-hmm. 
but he picked out probably and i and i think i ended up i was like 24 sticks okay and every single one of them was something i want to smoke got you or i have never smoked and and i was like wow yeah so dude think about how lucky we are to have a cigar shop that has jay and scott Mm. guys that know what we like to smoke and that doesn't happen unless you go to your brick and mortar on a regular basis support your brick and mortar but also realize realize this that when you're in the brick and mortar on a regular basis those guys get to know what yes, you they do. smoke yes, they do. and they can recommend cigars that you would never think mm-hmm. of because they know the they know realm your palate. They yes know your palate. they know the realm of your palate mm-hmm. dude jay knocked it out i was i was serious when i said that should be a sampler <laughs> and guess what one of the cigars was the medallia toro <laughs> i was like dude because you know yes, any, I, i've confirmed I, i've changed well Thank i you. mean but, but you know what that related to me that jay listens to the show yes he does because never in my life that people know me from cigars would people think i would prefer the toro over mm-hmm. the medallion mm-hmm. they wouldn't even think that i would want the toro mm-hmm. so the Unless fact they that listen. right yeah. and i was like jay you know what that that was a special cigar mm-hmm. because it was a message that not only do we support you we listen to the yeah, show yeah he did me the same way remember for the uh the new years when he gave me that black irish Oh, yeah, yeah. He hit me dead. It was like, oh, thank you. And he just looked at me and smiled and walked away. He said, I know. Well, you know I what's know. funny, though? Was you know what other McAuliffe was in there? What's that? The Sumatra. Oh. I mean, dude, does this guy know us? Yes. I mean, I was like, yes. lights out. Yes. And then I'll tell you a couple other cigars. Two definitions. Which ones? The blue. Blue. Gold. No. The, maroon. Oh, oh, the, the green, mar- the maroon, maroon and the blue, Ugh. dude. Yes. And you know, yes. and you know what? That was that was actually one of the last cigars I smoked. Okay. And how about this? Twenty four cigars lasted, outlasted my COVID. So you know I was sick. You know I was sick. You know what I'm saying? No, I didn't freeze. <laughs> I didn't freeze. You know I'm. I'm 24 cigars outlasted my COVID. I've watched you, especially when we first became friends. I've watched you almost smoke a box (laughs) in a day. (laughs) No, 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 don't, don't lie. I've sat here with you. Now, I didn't smoke as many as you, but I, I remember one day I smoked five. And you almost smoked a box. I'm talking about 10. <laughs> yeah. I'm not talking about 20. And I'm sitting there looking at this dude. I'm like, damn, he got another one? <laughs> and I'm still looking at mine. I'm like, this dude is a smoker. <laughs> hey, and then when you were done with yours, we would continue playing the, the game, game. And I'd have to pause and be like, aren't you going to get another cigar? Yeah, I'm like, I'm still on this one. <laughs> I'm like, what? He's like, game pause. I'm like, what? Cigar break. I'm like, this. Come on, man. But. For you to let 24 last you 14 days, that's less than two a day. Yeah, you know what? It averaged out because the first day that I really, really felt bad, uh-huh. I only smoked one cigar. I in can fact, believe that. In fact, I didn't smoke it until about 5 o'clock in the evening. <laughs> you wake up with a cigar. And my <laughs> wife was like, that's when I knew you were sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she walks in the bedroom. You, ro- you rolling out the bed, reaching in the human <laughs> <laughs> my wife I'll brush my teeth later <laughs> my wife had gone with a friend to go do you know when she meets with her friends because of covid they have to go somewhere where they can social distance i got you, I got you. and so usually it's like at the park <laughs> enough room free air. and there's not a lot of people yeah. <laughs> so anyway she came home at like four and i was just getting up and she was like have you been in bed all day? And I was like, yeah, I would have been out. Mm-hmm. She was like, yeah, you need to go get tested. <laughs> <laughs> right now, she was bagging away, giving you the cross. <laughs> no. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, Jay, 
man. A hundred percent, man. Jay, a hundred percent. The dude took care of me. You know what? You feel the love. Oh, it was the same way when I had my surgery. Lat, lat. February 2nd to be last year. Right after he knew I was out the hospital, he sent me a text. You need any sticks? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. He is that caring, man. He really it, is. And it's not just for and us. I, it's I, for anybody. And I sent him a message, and I was like, dude, that is so yeah. – You, you I mean, you you really just – you you take it to a whole different level. That's the importance of a brick and mortar, a true brick and mortar that positions itself. Hey, there to was take no online cigar shop sending me cigars <laughs> asking how I was doing. I you promise you, cigar in the, in the national. Oh, it's, it's, please, <laughs> no, thank you. But anyway, uh, it's just a whole different experience. So support your brick and mortars, yes. and if you are in your hometown on a regular basis the more time you spend up there the more it allows them to service your needs Mm -hmm. and what's best for you because when they get to know you is when that service level goes up mm, so mm. much higher i mean don't get me wrong you can walk into the leaf and you're going to get great service Mm -hmm. and they're going to take care of you but when they get to know what you like to smoke you get that extra you get that extra that those recommendations that blow you away Hit a home run, bro. Boom. <laughs> Hit a home run. So anyway, let's jump into our pick six of the week. Uh, My pick six was easy. Really? I'm serious for you. It was all definition. <laughs> wow. It was all definition. Blue. I'm not, no, 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 no. We're not ready. Okay. Don't, just back. I can go with that real now, quick. Mine now, is done. Now, are you just going to give us the colors of the band? Mm-hmm. I need you to look them up. Oh, Lord, I want to is... know the name of these cigars. Here we go. Because these guys aren't going to be able to say, hey, send me some blue ones. When you're talking about definition, all you have well, to say is blue. True, true. But I want to <laughs> know. Send me the blue one, the gold I, one, I, and I, the new orange. <laughs> you know what's. You know, on the definition cigars, uh-huh. I uh, hang on a second. I'm trying to put my glasses back on. <laughs> uh, the definition cigars, every one of them has been a home run for me, except for one. The, the new one, the the flying yeah. pig Viatola. I love that one. <laughs> it, it didn't it didn't hit it out of the park for me, and uh, you know, uh. I'm I'm usually a big fan of that size of cigar as well, but it just, dude, because their other cigars knock it out of the park. So I was a little disappointed that it, I don't know what it was, and I talked to Larry, and he felt the exact same way I did. Well, I appreciate you two being on that same level, but I'm not there. I, you know what? You'll get there one day. No, I won't. <laughs> I'm going to stay exactly where I am and be well. Okay. So you ready for me? I am ready for you. Number one will be the Noir, N-O-I-R, which is the green label. Oh, okay. The Noir. Yeah. You know you you know that one. The green label is a great cigar. You no, 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 no. The green. I thought the green was the Corojo. Uh-uh. No, no, it's no. I think you're wrong. No, sir. It's the Noir. I'm telling you what I smoke. I know what I smoke. I know what I smoke. I understand you know what color the band was. I know what I smoke. I I know what I smoke. I think that is the Corojo. I know what I smoke. I'm going to look it up. (laughs) I am going to look it up. And then when I prove you wrong, you're going to have to do two shots. (laughs) It's going to be a drinking game. No, Lord. No, Lord. No. Okay. So what's number two? Number two was the integrity. The silver. Uh, you know what? I don't know that I've had that one yet. Got three. <laughs> three. Smoked two. One is laying now, in the bottom. Now, how is that one? It's a great stick, man. Earthy. A little bit. I, I taste a little bit of nut. It's not sweet at all. And the last third, I got a little bit of pepper, which was perfect because it took me all the way through the last third. And I was like, ah, yes, yes. And my third one was that pig, that flying pig, the orange label. I don't know so what the name was, of it is. That was on your top. That's my three. Wow. Okay. That was my three this week. Everything else is something, you know, I've always smoked. But those three hit me. It was like, man. And when I, the first time we smoked that orange, I loved it. And you was like, ah, I don't got, I was like, man, I'm loving this thing, man. <laughs> I'm loving it. To, to the point I went and bought three more. Well, I'll tell you this. Today at the Leaf, I smoked a cigar I'd never smoked before. 
I'm pretty sure it was from uh is it uh, Crown Heads? Crown Heads? I didn't see what you were smoking. But I have no idea what the name of the cigar. It's not on my list because I don't okay. know. But let me tell you, that was a phenomenal. Where'd you get it from? Cigar. Leaf? Yeah, yeah. I, I know you get it because you don't. Do it's an orange. Like it it's an orange band, uh-huh. and I'm pretty sure it was a Crown Heads. And I have no idea. All I know was it was a Habano. Okay. And you know, I'm a fan. Friend, yeah. But when I was looking around this morning, the wrapper was just seamless, <laughs> pretty, uh, and I was like, you know what? That's a really good looking stick. So I bought it and dude, it was lights I'm out. Try it out. Now, have you smoked the uh my father's uh which one is that the uh uh Francesca? No. <laughs> I, <laughs> dude, I definitely don't know that one. <laughs> hey, let me tell you something. One of the wait, coughs, a wait a minute. Can you remember when we had the conversation about I told you I said I flunked French on purpose and you said you didn't do it on purpose, you just didn't know what you that just showed Hey, <laughs> let me tell you something. Fr- Francesca? One of, one of the comments that was funny what was that? said Rob pronouncing the name of cigars in his West Texas vernacular. <laughs> that Labuckian <laughs> vernacular. Uh, Corrosia? Cor- no. Uh, I was like, dude. So you have to help me on some words, but then I, I hear you say it, and I'm like, hey, I know like, what he's saying, but like, I'm not going to say it hey, that way. No, no, no. You listen to me, and you're like, I know that's not right, but now I think I know what I need to say. Yeah, I'll go with that. I will go with that. I mean, you know, I gave the wrong name of my number one of the year last year. Sure did. Sure I mean, did. I mean, how does one do that? Sure did. 1964. No, thank you. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a great stick. Yes, but that wasn't the but one that he was talking about. The stick I was picking for my number one, so. Forgive me on that, guys. Anyway, so this week, I like I told you, Jay blessed me up, with yeah. a lot of unique. So I really want to know what your cigars. three are this week, then. I tell you what, and, and and this is also because I had COVID. I told you I couldn't smell, mm-hmm. but I would say I lost fifty percent of my flavor as well. Well, because you taste what you know. Right, right, right. But that's the level of how much I could taste. Yeah, I got you. So for them to... To really hit those buds. They had to be... Okay, I got you. So right out the gate, what do you think Jay blesses me with? I don't know. A Kentucky (laughs) fire-cured flying pig. Now, he knows me. Yeah. Because he knows if I've smoked like eight cigars in a row, I like to smoke a flying pig because to you, to or the Kentucky palate. fire cure. Yeah, because it will palate. really open up your palate. Yeah. It is it is I mean, unless I've smoked a lot of cigars, I don't want to smoke one. It's too strong to, with that Kentucky fire cured oak it's, or whatever you know the what burn is? barrel is you know what it is to me what's that that white dog yeah <laughs> <laughs> right yeah it really is it's strong <laughs> so anyway that was awesome when i saw that in there i was like the dude knows me <laughs> so anyway that's on my list this week and that's okay. one of the reasons why was because even though i wasn't smoking a lot of cigars i, mm-hmm. I wasn't getting a lot of flavor from my cigars those that did Right. And then yesterday was the day I smoked the blue band definition, definition yes. cigar. Now, was that one of yours? Yes. Okay. Now, which one was that? Oh, I don't even know the which name one the of it blue again. was, uh, but, you know, I left that one in the pack because I wanted to be able to taste it. And so hmm. after the 14 days, I was like, I'm going to smoke it now. You hear Rob, folks? He's being a connoisseur. I'm going to let it sit. I want to enjoy this one. Well, you know, it was some of those cigars that he brought me was hard for me to smoke because I knew I wasn't going to be getting the full flavor. Okay. You okay. know what I mean? I was like, ooh, that's, that's, that's really good. Yeah. But I'm going to wait on this but one, I'm, though. <laughs> but I'm going to smoke it anyway. <laughs> so, you know... It was an interesting time to be smoking cigars when you have COVID. Yeah, I got you. And I still can't smell. You still can't smell? I can't smell. I talked oh, to my... Man, no, 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 no. Let on. me tell you something. <laughs> I talked to my brother, which is my doctor. Uh, yeah. And he said that can last up to three months that you can't smell. Ooh. I, I know someone who's... It's been six months. 
I don't know why the producer is just yakking over there. Okay, I'm trying to give you information. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's giving us information. That's why I love my producer. <laughs> so, y- you set it up to six months. Six Some, months. Someone I know. Wow. Wow. And dude, it's a it's a very strange thing that you can't taste. I mean that smell. you can't smell. Wow. You know the funny thing is, my mother couldn't smell her whole life. So she, now you see how she feels. Right. Wow. I actually have that experience. And wow. you know, let me just tell you, out of all the senses that you could be missing out on, <laughs> I think that's smell. the one I would want to go with. Yeah. Because even though you would miss out on a lot of great smells, you also miss out on a lot of bad smells. <laughs> like like going to post Texas and smelling sulfur everywhere. Or or how about when you drive into Lubbock and the cattle oh, feed yard is God, blowing yes, in the right direction? Yes. That's the same way it used to be in East St. Louis. Yeah, National uh National City. It was the old stockyard. Yeah. And this was a stockyard from the eighteen hundreds that closed in like nineteen ninety something. So you know how much pig blood was in that ground and it was just like it'll get hot one day we get at like 110 oh and it just starts oh it's like steam god man with that humidity it just floated forever Ooh. you know when the wind was out of the right direction growing up in lubbock you could smell the cow the cattle yards anywhere in town yeah. the whole yeah. entire yeah. town of two hundred thousand yeah. people it's, it it's crazy. wild because the stockyard, that scent would even go over the Mississippi. It wouldn't go into downtown St. Louis. But if you were on the riverfront, certain days with the right, with the right wind, oh, man. And you, you'd you know because the riverfront would be bare. Because <laughs> oh, you know oh, it's never. Yeah, there. nobody. They're like, oh, no, I ain't going to walk around in that smell. But it's, who God, I understand. And, yeah, if I'm going to lose something, I'd, I'd rather lose the scent of sm- uh, smell. Okay, so some- <laughs> I'm going to tell you my third pick of this week is going to blow you away i'm stopping everything you're you you would not guess this in a million years <laughs> i'm a gala i mean uh monte cristo boom <laughs> wow i'm gonna wow. tell you right now this is this is spot uh has really surprised me so all you guys out there that have ever messaged me about monte cristos and i gave you shit <laughs> i'm sorry for one stick okay just that one I'm stick. I'm not really sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to pull it back for that one yeah. stick. <laughs> no, you know, and I've always said, you smoke what you want to yeah. smoke. But for me, I'm really impressed with this Espada. Mm. It's the Oscuro, and it's it's really something. Yeah. It's it's a quality cigar. Yes. I didn't know Monte Cristo made quality cigars. <laughs> so, They've lasted for so long for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Granted, okay. I give you that. I give you that. So anyway, guys, that's our pick six of the week. And coming up next, we've got our top ten bourbons. Yes, five and You're five. You're going to do five. I'm going to do five. And then we're going to see, you know, how many double up, because I'm sure we're going to have. Quite possibly. I mean, I can't imagine, but you know, you never know. Yeah. You never know. So I'm going to let you start with your first one. It's going to be the Redemption Bourbon. Have I had that? No. I had that when I went back to Illinois. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think I've even had that. Now, what's the bottle look like on that? I'll show it to you. Yeah, please do. Because I'll show it to you. You know what? If you're watching on the YouTube channel, we'll put up a photo of each one of the bourbons so you'll know what it looks like. So if you decide you want to try it out, try you'll be able out. to pick it up. Try Let me see that. Out. This is called the Redemption. Uh-huh. And what's the what's the proof on it? Do you know? Nope. You know, I don't get caught up in proof. You know, that's a very important aspect to me because I'm not a fan of... Of like a 86 to a 90. Mm-hmm. I'm more of a fan of like a hundred to 115. Yeah, I know that with you because you, you speak on it a lot. Well, and I mean, because of the strength of the cigars. Oh, that's a, that's a nice look. I, I have not had that one. Is that available here? I don't know. I had it at home. He's, he's saying he doesn't know he had it when he went back home because yeah, he's Illinois. not on the mic. Yeah. I had it when I ha- got back home. Okay, so I'm going to start with one of my basic ones that, Mm -hmm. you know what, this is actually the bourbon that kicked it off for me. Okay. You know, when I was younger, I used to do some chug-a-lugs of Jim Beam, Jack Daniels. It was not a good experience, and now I can't drink those. 
Gotcha. Because the memories. <laughs> or, the hey, the partial hey, memories. I was going to say, or the lack of. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, you know, I don't drink enough bourbon to not be able to remember mm. the night before. Uh, but this one is the one that kicked it off for me. And, you know, Alan down at the Leaf. Yes, sir. He's He brought this bottle up there. And I was like, hey, you mind if I try that? And he's like, yeah, you knock yourself out. And I was like, wow, mm. that's smooth. So what is it? And it's not super strong. But for a beginner, I think it's one of the best bourbons out there. So if you have some friends that really haven't dove in <laughs> to the realm of bourbons, uh-huh. this is a great starter point. Got gotcha. you. And it's only about 28 bucks. Got gotcha. you. Buffalo Trace. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know what? It's 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 a quality mm-hmm. bourbon at around twenty eight dollars, yep. and and now and I don't drink a lot of it now, but when I do, it's still great. Yeah. But if you want to turn on a friend to some good bourbon, let them try that, and I think they're going to be diving on it. Mm-hmm. So, what's your next one? It is Woodford Reserve. Oh, well, you know, I knew that would be on your list. I mean, without a doubt, I knew that would be on your list. And I got to say, you know, I only had it for the first time when Larry bought When Was it you or Larry? Okay, you brought a bottle, and that was the first time I tried it. Now, have you been in our locker? I, I bought a bottle to go in the locker, uh-huh. and I was told that it went in the locker right? and then disappeared. So you didn't see what I left in its place? No. <laughs> well, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I don't have a key to get into that locker. Remember? Oh. So here's the thing. Me, <laughs> me and Big Boy here share a locker. <laughs> and I got the key. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. It's supposed to be my locker from the beginning, but Jay gave him the key. <laughs> I don't well, know what's in the locker. <laughs> well, you know. I bought a bottle of Woodford that was supposed to go in there. <laughs> and well, then I, you got some of it. I didn't get any of it. It was unopened when I gave it to, to, uh, to you to put in there. I thought Larry brought it over yeah. here and we. So that was the bottle that we drank that night? Yeah. You lousy. So you got some of it. <laughs> hey, you know what I say? Where is your new gun? I'm going to shoot you, hey, Joe. <laughs> you know what I say? You know what I say? What? Surprise. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, no, but that's a great bourbon. Yes. I hadn't had it until you bought that bottle. Yes. And it is that rich. Caramel, oh, yeah. That caramel, caramel aroma, that little bit of spice to it. Oh, I'm talking about a great bourbon man and it pairs so well with, with a medium everything. plus Ooh. cigar yes you know it probably even a medium but if you get up a little bit higher than a medium level you're gonna really enjoy that woodford oh yes i my, my buddy down in tallahassee uh eric you know eric smallwood yes he told me about a new one which would reserve double oak i was like i gotta find that yeah. I got to find Hey, it. you know what? Anytime it says double oak, <laughs> you, you're I'm in. in. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. Got you. <laughs> you're going to you're gonna give me a little more woody flavor. <laughs> I'm in. See, I'm in. Yeah. I'm so we got to find that one. Yeah, that sounds good. You know what we need to do is take a little trip one day when we're both off and just go hunt some Ooh, bourbon. Yes. I mean, you know, drive San Angelo or all. Wichita Falls or all. Lubbock. Yes. Make a day of it. Yes. And then we got to stop and get some bamboo. Yeah, you know, I was talking to somebody about the bamboo. Oh, it was uh, uh, Zika. And that's rum, so it's not on our list. Yeah, it's not on the list, <laughs> but it's, it's it's something to behold Ooh. if you are a rum drinker. Ooh. And I was not a rum drinker, but I'll drunk. I'll drunk. <laughs> yeah, I'll, drink, did. <laughs> I'll drink some bamboo. Yes, sir. I really will. Now, I will tell you this, though. I had some rum, I want to say, back in like 2017. Uh-huh. And we, I was at a training class up in Fort Worth for a week. And so I went to a liquor store there and I bought a bottle of rum and I want to say it was like $17, mm. but it was from Dominican Republic. Yeah. It was fantastic. Mm-hmm. And you know what I found is I'm not a fan of like the rum with that spice. Yeah. And when I say spice, I don't mean like pepper. I mean spice. Like it's a spice to it. Yeah, it's different from pepper. You could tell. But I'm not that type either. So when they, because I, I started with the bamboo in that, in Austin, 
at yeah, a so you probably don't like the regular no, rooms no, that no, a lot of people no. like. like. Like, let's just say Captain Morgan. Captain Morgan, Bacardi. None yeah. Of them. Yeah. And, no, you know, Bacardi is what we drink in high school. Yeah, because we got. Yeah. Tore up from the floor. Oh, of Bacardi. 151. <laughs> yeah, you remember. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so. Fond memories. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, that's a good choice. What's your number two? My number two is going to be Eagle Rare. Good, which good is bourbon. also a Buffalo Trace yep, product. Yeah, but it's a good bourbon. It to me, that is also on the lighter side, mm-hmm. but it's jam packed full of flavors. Yeah. And you can smoke a medium, medium plus cigar with that, and it's gonna go mm-hmm. very well because you're gonna marry up a lot of flavor <laughs> from both the cigar gotcha. and the bourbon. Gotcha. And I wish the Eagle Rare was easier to find, Mm-mm. but you know the thing about it is, like I was talking to Zika and he's out in California. Yeah. It's on the shelves all day long. <laughs> and instead of thirty or thirty five to forty five dollars, it's like twenty eight dollars. And that's <sighs> you know it's it's funny how different regions, different bourbons are way more popular. But see, here's the thing that, that's weird to me because you remember when Junior came and he was telling us the prices of the sticks in California versus here. Right. Well, I said the same thing about the bourbon uh-huh. because I talk to guys on the Discord all the time, and what we're paying for bourbon, they're not. They're paying half. Yes. It's that's weird to me. Right. And it's like so Texas is cool with cigars california's cool with bourbon yep. <laughs> so you know it's it's i didn't realize that i figured if cigars were expensive in california then the, the bourbon, bourbon would, would be, be too yep. so that's interesting all right so what's your uh number three whistle pig old world old world rye what in the hell had it in austin baby now i'm gonna tell you this and i'm not trying to be a dick <gasps> but rye is not a bourbon what? What are That's you trying it. to say? I'm showing you. It's a rye. Oh, bro. You can't put that on your top 10 oh, bourbon so list. Mine. Whistle pig. Rye. I get it, but it's not a it's not a bourbon. So we're actually giving y'all our top nine bourbon and our and 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 his number one rye. I have one that is a special uh, what, 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 what so I say, gonna honorable throw, mention. You're going to throw in an extra? Like you always do. I never week. do that. I always oh, go by the, I, I go Hold by on. the rules. Let me get out of here before that light. Let's go. <laughs> let's go for that lightning bolt hit. <laughs> I'm telling you. Can't, yeah. give, can't give any respect. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> true. We're not gonna argue with you on that one. Okay, sir. That is it. Go. Okay. So my- I marry that with especially mediums to medium bold. The first time I uh the first cigar I smoked with that was a Sumatra. And when I say. Oh, that's a great pairing. I was like, I mean, oh God. I was like, I now, love now, both I got to ask you about this because I, I struggle with a lot of rye uh-huh. because most of the ones I've tried tend to lean way to the sweet yeah, side. Was, just, is this sweet? No. Because. It wasn't to me. You know, the. Uh, which which one was that? The Angel Share? Uh, gin, not gin. <laughs> Right, <laughs> can't speak, but it was so freaking sweet. I was like, and that's a very highly sought that. after. Jay had some, one okay. Night. And anyway, I was excited to try it, and after I had it, I, I didn't even finish it. I was okay. like, oof, that is sweet. Uh, so I also had some uh, monkey shoulder rye, yeah. and it was. I sweet. had that, somebody brought that up to the leaf. One I time. had it at that bar around the corner from the leaf. Somebody brought it up to the leaf. They had monkey. Was it shoulder. the green room? You know that, that young, bar. Yeah. Over there off South Second, I mean North Second and uh, Pine. I have to be honest; I've never been to a bar in Abilene. Well, you're not missing anything. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm okay then. I mean, anytime you have a bar and you can't smoke a cigar, oh, I'm not going there. I got you. And the only reason I went to the green room was because they have an outdoor patio. Okay, and it's not really an outdoor patio. They put tables and chairs outside on the sidewalk. <laughs> So it's not really a patio. <laughs> That's their patio. Like people walking by. Yeah. Get so, away. Yeah. Keep walking. <laughs> so, you know, and you know, when you're smoking cigars, yeah. people walking by give you the look. And then walk across the street. Right. <laughs> you see the smoke already here. It's not foggy. <laughs> no, it's, you can see it. <laughs> 
So anyway, uh, number three for you. You know, I gotta go. This was this is up and on the proof, but I gotta go with. It's a hundred proof. Mm-hmm. George Dickel bottle and bond. You know, I love that Dickel. <laughs> and you know what? It's it's freaking forty four dollars. Yeah. And to me, it's one of the top bourbons out there. And you know the the awesome thing about bourbon is you don't have to spend seventy dollars, eighty, ninety dollars to get a good bottle. No, you don't. And I mean, and I've and I've spent ninety dollars mm-hmm. on a bottle, and I got to tell you. I won't. I probably won't do it again unless there was some crazy, you know, Pappy Van Winkle that someone said, "Hey, I'll sell this to you for a hundred bucks." Dude, okay, here you go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but then would I drink it? Yeah, because you got to think. Uh, <laughs> I could sell this for thirty three hundred. Yeah, just let me sit up there and take a picture. <laughs> you know how you take your pictures? You stage it and everything, Dude. and then put it, <laughs> then put it out. And there. Let me tell you what. My Instagram has suffered from COVID because I did not take a single photo during COVID. <laughs> you, you, your sense of taste was gone. <laughs> my my everything was gone. But anyway, I'll get back to posting more stuff here soon. Gotcha. But anyway, that George Dickel man. It it's a good pairing all the way up mm. to the full body heavy cigar, yeah, yeah. and I would say that you're going to need at least a medium plus to pair with it. If you pair it with a medium or less, the bourbon's going to overpower the cigar yeah. so much that you're not going to enjoy the cigar. You're going to enjoy the hell out of the bourbon, uh-huh. but the cigar is going to suffer from being overpowered. Uh-huh. All right, what's your next one? Evan Williams Bollard and Bond. Can't go wrong. <laughs> cannot go wrong. You know what? And and I was telling somebody the other day, we were talking on a Zoom meeting, a herf, mm-hmm. and Zico was talking about some different ones. And oh I think I can't remember which one we were discussing at the time, uh-huh. but it was a nice bourbon. Okay. You know, medium value priced. Okay. And I was and they were talking about that's a great bourbon for a starting point. Mm-hmm. And I said, I I, I disagree. First of all, that level of bourbon, a brand new guy is not going to appreciate the flavor. No. You got to work your way up. It's a lot like cigars. Cigars. I was going to say it's the same as cigars. And you can't start at a higher end and appreciate it. I re- yeah, right? <laughs> Looking at Luke. <laughs> so, because I remember the first time I smoked a Padron 1926, uh-huh. I wasn't ready for yeah. it. I, I When I got done, I was like, ah, it was okay. Mm-hmm. You know, and then you then you tasted some that were way less par, and then you start saying, "Well, you know what?" <laughs> well, it's funny how your palate grows, grows, and, and the more you educate yourself yes. with trying. Yes, and so that's the same way. And I said to him, "I think Evan Williams Ball and Bond, or somewhere in that neighborhood, mm-hmm. is where a beginner wants to start yeah. because it gives you the." The opportunity to taste good bourbon, mm-hmm. but it's not very complex. Uh-huh. But it's a really and talk about value <laughs> at, at somewhere between sixteen and eighteen dollars. Come on, come on. <laughs> for in fact, come that's on. what we're drinking tonight. I was getting ready to say it. Yeah, I mean that's what we're drinking tonight. Hundred proof. And I got to tell you, because I had COVID, I haven't had the opportunity to go restock us on bourbon. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you, this is it. So here. When it's done, it's done. Yeah, if if if, if we finish this out, it's it. <laughs> so anyway, the Evan Williams Ball and Bond, I and that's my favorite. Well, I say that, but you look up my there, next no- pick. Oh damn it! My next pick is the Evan Williams Single Barrel. Ah. That let me tell you what. And the funny thing is to me is like I'm a fan of the Evan Williams Ball and Bond. Mm-hmm. For $18 all day long, that's a good bourbon. But for just $33, <laughs> you can get the Evan Williams single barrel, and it is days ahead of the ball and bond. That's the graduation. And and, and the thing about it is, like, I see the single barrel as a bottle for your seasoned. Mm-hmm. Now, 
granted, we are not nowhere near whatever you call bourbon experts. <laughs> nowhere near. <laughs> we are cigar guys. So, you know, if I say a seasoned guy and you're an expert bourbon guy, I, I don't say that. I don't need yeah. emails telling me about the hundred and fifty dollar bottle of whatever no. you're drinking. I get it. We're not in that we're, realm. Yeah, we're poor. Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> and I'm a blue collar worker, man. I got We're it. both blue collar guys. And so when I say the Evan Williams single barrel mm-hmm. is for a seasoned guy, you know, what I mean by that is there's enough complexity there uh-huh. that a guy who's been drinking a bourbon for several years can enjoy. Gotcha. You know gotcha. what I mean? Yeah. And for thirty three dollars. Come on. Now is it and it's a little easier to find mm-hmm. than like the Eagle Rare. Yeah. And so anyway, that's my fourth pick. What do you got for your fifth? Elijah Craig small batch. Small batch. That is a premium. <laughs> now 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 I say premium, a premium on flavor. Mm-hmm. It's smooth, it's rich, it's really good. And so I would definitely say that that's another medium to medium yes. plus cigar strength that goes very well. Paris perfectly. If you smoke like the blue band definition cigar, mm. I think that cigar's too strong for the Elijah Craig. Because you get more of the cigar than you Right, get. right, right. So you want to knock that mm-hmm. down. You know what I think would be great with the Elijah Craig, and I've experienced this, is either the medallia, okay. which is very complex, mm-hmm. but you know I consider that to be a medium plus because they mar- they would marry perfect. But I also like to pair that with like the AJ New World Cameroon, which is a little Ooh. smoother. Ooh. You know what I mean? That's a good yeah. pairing. That is. That is. Yeah, if you haven't tried that, I I highly huh. recommend it. Yeah, that's going to be on my list. So your that's, your, that's your now you're going to give us a bonus yeah. one too, right? Uh-huh. Okay. So my last one, and you know what? This isn't really a refined bourbon. Okay, but it's good. Okay, it's kind of in your face. It's a hundred. Let's see. I think it's a hundred and sixteen proof. Mm. It's the Wild Turkey 101. <laughs> you know, and I'm not a fan of the baseline Wild Turkey. Uh-uh. But when you get into the Wild Turkey 101, it kicks it up a yeah, big notch. It does. And then when you get into the rare breed, I, to me, the you rare understand. breed is good, but it's not as good as the 101. Mm. And it's about almost twice as much the price. That's what I was going to say. The 101 stands on its own, and the rare breed is a little hot for me. Okay. Now, I've had the rare breed, and when you smoke a cigar with it, you're going to want to go full-blown mm-hmm. nuts in your face. Because you got to have something to marry yes, with that. you got to have something that's powerful. The hair on your chin <laughs> should be standing upright. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but with the with the one hundred and one at one hundred, I think it's one hundred and fifteen or one hundred and sixteen proof. Mm. Me and Tim got a bottle of that one night, and we smoked like three cigars and killed the whole bottle, and it was fantastic. Wow. It was phenomenal, <clears throat> and we smoked several good cigars, and we drank some one hundred and one, and it was fantastic. So that's that's my five. Okay, what's your bonus since you didn't show up with <laughs> anyway five bourbons anyway when I went home. I met up with a guy that used to work for me. He is now a big wig with Google. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, big wig with Google. So we sat at his home and uh, we we did some reminiscing. And uh, he pulled out Weller Special Reserve. Wow! Wow! See now, that is that is Ooh, something nice. Oh Lord! Because I got to tell you, if I was going to throw in a bonus. <sighs> Uh, it was, I think it was Larry pulled out a bottle of Weller's double oak mm. and it was phenomenal that, that night. And I have to thank Sean, man. That oh, was a Sean, great, Sean brought that. No, I'm talking about my Sean oh, from back oh, home. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Dude, we smoked some great sticks and 
paired it with that Weller, bruh. Well, I'm gonna have to give one extra. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you one know up. I always that one up. <laughs> I gotta one up you now. <laughs> you went there, Brian. So, I gotta well, get you. <laughs> I was thinking about when Sean gifted me a bottle. Oh, come on now. There's two bottles actually, so I'm I'm gonna throw two at you. <laughs> The one of them was the Old Forester 1910. Yeah. That is that a phenomenal you. bottle. Yeah. And I've only bought one since because I couldn't find it anymore. You know, it's hard to find around here. Mm. And then the other one was the Jefferson's Reserve. You remember that <laughs> yeah, Jefferson's Reserve? Yeah, I remember Reserve? the Jefferson's Reserve. Which I also haven't been able to find that. What was that one he brought that he told everybody to get a little bit of? <laughs> I want to say that was some Elmer T. God, that was some great it was bourbon. it was something like that. It was bourbon that was out of our price Oof. range, and he's like, "Just get a little bit." Just you know, I bit. I can't enjoy bourbon that that's that expensive. Oh yeah, because I would like to drink. Yeah, and I don't want I don't want to go broke hey, drinking. Hey, when I tilt up the bottom of my glass, I don't want to hear a slot machine. <laughs> <laughs> ding 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 ding. You know what I mean? I like to I like to go like. Yeah, I'm enjoying my drink. You don't want to hear ATM. Just, <laughs> right. 20s just flowing. <laughs> right. So, you know, and, you know, I got responsibilities. <laughs> I got a I wife. Totally I got kids. I totally hey, understand. Speaking of kids, did I tell you my daughter's coming home? When? It's a, in a week and a half. Just for a visit? No. For good? Yes. Oh, I can see the smile on his face. Yes. You see the smile on his face? I'm, I'm very excited. I'm ah. very excited. You know. Is she going to come back with an accent? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, 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 it's noticeable. Is it a Texas mixed with Australian? Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. I got to hear <laughs> yeah, it's it's. I'm I was facetiming with her the other day, and I was like, "Say that again." Say that again. She was like, "What?" And I was like, <laughs> "What you said?" Just say it again. Just say it again. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'm just so excited. It's such a blessing. Yeah. And you know, she's been praying about it. And she said, "You know, God's just calling me home. It's time for me to start my next chapter." Right. Nothing. And wrong you know with what? That. She's been in Australia for 18 months. Yeah. It was sup- originally it was going to be six months. So it added a year to it. <laughs> right. It went from a six. It went from half a year to a year and a half. Dude, <laughs> realize this: she left at seventeen. Came back. She celebrated two birthdays in Since Australia. She's been gone, yeah. Yes, Since she's been gone. So I'm excited to have her come home. And she hit me up the other night for a new project that she wants to start working with. Uh-huh. And I'm going to tell you that after the show. Gotcha, We're going to a little bit of that. Gotcha, but I'm just so excited that she's coming home. Yeah. I'm just going to ask, you know, our listeners for a little bit of prayer for my family. Everybody knew about my son is getting ready to have a uh, a baby, a and my daughter was pregnant. Right, she lost the baby, and I'm sorry for that, yeah. bro. I've been kind of down because of it, but you know, hanging around with you and Larry, it gave me an opportunity to escape from that, and it kept me going. It kept me going because, <clears throat> you know, I've gone through losing a child due to birth, still birth, and. For my child to have to go through that. Right. You know the pain. Oh, man, it hit me hard. But, you know, God is good. Well, I don't know if I ever told you this, that I had lost a kid. I didn't know that. And uh, me and my wife and my daughter were at SeaWorld. Oh, Lord. And Luke <laughs> went missing. <clears throat> and I got to say, I was like, if we leave now... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe somebody else will take him home. Wait a minute. What was that? Uh, Joe Dirt, where they left him <laughs> at the Grand Canyon? Now, 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 you know that my MO is to make light. Yeah, I know you was of, losing of your mind. I know you was losing your mind. I, I know Miss B was losing her mind, first of all, but you, you were reacting My wife her. was losing her mind, and I was like, I'll meet you in the car. <laughs> She was like, we got to find him. And I was like, no. I'll meet you in the car. <laughs> no, I started God. singing, he can survive. <laughs> hey, hey. 
That's so wrong, I man. Know, right? That's so wrong. <laughs> so two weeks later, <laughs> wow, he showed up. Wow. <laughs> he was like a dog. Stood at the door. We, <laughs> stood standing at the front door. Did you even look for me? <laughs> I was like, damn, he found his way home. <laughs> wow. Hey, wow. hey, and the funny thing is, in that two weeks that he was missing, we moved. <laughs> and he still found us. <laughs> So you are so wrong. <laughs> you are so wrong. I, I'm amazed at the person that Luke is. <laughs> you know what? Let me tell you something. That young man has more morals oh, than yeah. I'll ever have. Oh, we know. <laughs> he, <laughs> he. Everybody that knows you and him knows that. Let there me, is no question. Let me just tell you, I'm proud of that young man <laughs> who he's turned out to be. And we are too. <laughs> hey, hey, you're like, and we're amazed. Yes. <laughs> oh, Lord. I, I tell, you, I tell you, when, when those days when Luke would explode, I said, Rob, how's it look? How's it? How is it looking in the mirror? Because <laughs> he was acting just like you, and you looking at you got this look on your face, like I dare him looking t- say that to me. I'm like, it's you. <laughs> Do you not know who you're talking to, boy? Yes, he does. <laughs> DNA knows who he's right. talking to. <laughs> Hey, so, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this week's show. We want to make sure that next week you're looking for the YouTube video on the uh, Humidor Review. Case Elegance. From Case Elegance. Uh, We're excited to have them on board, but it's going to be cool because I've researched by going to their website to see how much quality they put. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to want to miss the review yes, on that. Sir. Yes, sir. And then also, before we go, <laughs> we want to give a shout out to all our Patreons. Yes, sir. Our Patreons help make the show possible <sighs> week to week. Yes. And, you know, the, the cool thing about our Patreons, especially with having them on Discord, is they've become family. Mm. I mean, it's it's funny because different days of the week, I talk to different Patreons through Discord. But you know what I realized? Either this week or really, I guess even last week, I talk to Jax Rocks mm. every Saturday morning. Mm. You know what I mean? That's kind of like, I know he's off work on finally on the Saturday. Uh-huh. I'm getting up to do a conference call, and we have that, communication back and forth so give a shout out to him and sean and baker how many times that doggone discord dean goes off and i look over there and i just fall out laughing man i don't say anything on there because i'm just too busy laughing man these guys you know what i all this time i thought you weren't saying anything on discord because you were too dumb to think of something to say (sighs) I'm so glad you who you are, Luke. I am, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, I am amazed, man. Big I dumb, a hey, big dumb animal. <laughs> I am so amazed. Hey, so also <laughs> want to give a shout out to Cool Hand Luke, and one more, one more, <laughs> Orlando. Orlando. It's like when I see Orlando, I think of a bullfighter. You could see him dressed up like that. I definitely could see him dressed up. Yeah, like I don't. I don't see him being where there's a bull, <laughs> but I could definitely see him dressed up like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So we want to give a shout out to all our Patreons. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate the support. It really does help the show every single week to continue. And I'm not going to make an announcement this week, but let's just say the Patreons are about to be getting a nice surprise. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. Oh, we're so glad to be back in the studio. And until next time, keep smoking. <laughs>